In this video we're going to look at multiplying decimals. Whenever I'm multiplying decimals I follow three steps. Step 1, I ignore the decimal points and multiply the numbers. Then step 2, I count the digits after the decimal points in the question and then in the answer it must be the same. And then step 3 then, I put the decimal point into my answer and then that should be right. Ok, so let's have a look at this example. We're going to do 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.5. So step one is ignore the decimal points. So I would ignore the decimal point, so you'd get 0, 3, which is just 3, and you would get 0, 5, which is just 5. So then you do 3 times 5. Well, 3 times 5 is 15. So that's step one, so ignore the decimal points and just multiply the numbers. Step two, count the number of digits after the decimal points in the question. So this digit's after a decimal point, and this digit's after a decimal point. So in the question, I have two digits after the decimal point. Therefore, in my answer, I must have two digits after the decimal point. So if I was to put the decimal point, I need to have two digits after it. Well, then I would put the 1.5 after the decimal point. And my answer would be 0 0.15. So the answer to 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 would be 0 0.15. Let's have a look at number one. Our next example is 12 multiplied by 0 0.2. So to do this again, step one is multiply the numbers without the decimal points. So that would be 12 multiplied by 0, 2, which is the same as 2. So we're going to do 12 times 2. Now these multiplications might be a bit trickier, and you may have to do, use the grid method to work out what the uh, answer to the multiplication is. But 12 times 2 would then be 24. Okay, step two, count the number of digits after the decimal points in the question. So this uh, 12 doesn't have any digits after the decimal point. But 0.2 has one digit after the decimal point. So in the question, there's one digit after the decimal point. Therefore, in the answer, there must be one digit after the decimal point. Now, we've got our 24, okay? We need to put it so that there's one digit after a decimal point. So I'm going to do 2.4. So the answer to 12 multiplied by 0.2 would be 2.4. So again, there's one number after the decimal point, or one digit after the decimal point in the question. So it's to be one digit after the decimal point in the answer. Okay, this time we're going to do 0 0.07 multiplied by 0 0.2. So again, step one is do the sum without the decimal points. So we get 0, 0, 007, so that would be 7, multiplied by 0, 2, which is, uh, that would be 2. So we're going to do 7 times 2, which equals 14. So 40, uh, the digits 1 and 4 have to be in our answer somewhere. Okay, next, count the number of digits after the decimal points in the question. So as you can see, you've got 1, 2 after the decimal point in the first digit. Uh, in the first question, uh, first number, and you have got one digit after the decimal point in the second number. So altogether, you've got one, two, three uh, digits after the decimal point in the question. Therefore, you must have three digits after the decimal point in the answer. So this time, you've only got the one and four. So what you're going to do is you're going to do zero, one, four after the decimal point, so, because that would have three digits after the decimal point in the answer, and you'd have to put your zero in front. So 0 0.07 multiplied by 0 0.2 would be 0 0.014. Okay, we're now going to do 10.5 multiplied by 1.4. So again, ignore the decimal points. So we're going to get 105 multiplied by 14. This time we'll definitely have to use the grid method to do this. So 105 multiplied by 14. Okay, so 1 times 1 is 1, and we've got 3 zeros. 1 times 5 is 5, and a 0. 4 times 1 is 4, and 2 zeros. And 4 times 5 is 20. Then we just need to add those uh, numbers up. So we've got uh, 1,000, 50, 400, and 20. So we'd add those up, 0, 7, one. So whenever you multiply 105 by 14, we would get 1,470. Okay, so we've done step one, ignore the decimal points and multiply the numbers. Step two, count the number of digits after the decimal points in the question. So in the question, we've got two digits after the decimal point. Therefore, we're going to have to put our decimal point into our answer so that we've got two digits after it. So if we put it here, we'll have two digits after the decimal point. 
Now, as you'll notice, this ends in a zero, so therefore our answer will just be 14.7. But whenever we're deciding when to put the decimal point into the question, okay, you still look at this uh, zero, okay? So it would be the answer would be 14.7. Um, but you do consider the zero whenever you put the decimal point in the answer, so you still have two digits after the decimal point, okay?